Hi, Jim Graham from Realtruth.net. It is February 26th, 2019. This is Lesson 17, and today we're going to talk about the scriptures. Uh, the scriptures referenced in the uh, Protestant Bible, the English Bibles, the Greek, and these scriptures um, we have 52 times the scriptures are referenced throughout the New Testament. Just scroll through them here and you can see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, in Acts, <clears throat> in Romans, 1 Corinthians, Galatians, Timothy, First and Second Timothy, James, Peter, First and Second Peter. Um, these men all reference the scriptures, and uh, specifically in Second Timothy, Paul was instructing him that the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith in the Messiah Yeshua. And all scriptures are given by inspiration of Yahweh. I'm, and so today we're going to talk about what are those scriptures. That's the topic of today's discussion. So what were the scriptures referred to in the letters of the New Testament? These scriptures were the Old Testament writings, the Tanakh, as it is called, <clears throat> and as this text, which is the authoritative for the Rabbinic Judaism, and is known as a Mes Masoretic text. And it is divided into 24 books. While the same Tanakh in the Protestant Bible, in the Bible that we have as English speakers or other languages, it's divided into 39 books. <coughs> we call it our Old Testament. In uh, when we in the uh, Protestant Christian community, it's our Old Testament. And then we have the Torah. And the Torah is instructions, teaching law. That's what it means. It has a range of meanings. And is generally referred to the first five books, the Pentateuch of the 24 or 39 books of the Tanakh. So when you hear people talking about the Tanakh and the Torah and the, and the uh, Book of Moses and the Prophets and what have you, the <clears throat> we'll, we'll get into that, but the Prophets, the history, the Book, uh, the Torah, the Law, that's all in the Tanakh. The t Torah, specifically, when they talk Torah, we're talking about the Pentateuch, Pentateuch, however you say that, the first five books, uh, Genesis, <coughs> uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And when Paul was instructing Timothy in his letter, 2 Timothy in his letter about the perilous times that would come in the last days and evil men and seducers would get worse and worse deceiving and being deceived where did Paul take him? Paul took Timothy back to the Tanakh in the Torah he didn't take him to, to some New Testament writing. He took him back to the Tanakh and Torah. And specifically, 
the Torah, and I say that specifically the Torah, which is where we find the wisdom and truth to bring us to salvation in Yeshua the Messiah. It is in the Torah that we learn the rules to live by, and it is in the Torah we get understanding of the work of the Messiah. Second Timothy 3.15 it says, And that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures, the Tanakh, which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith which is in Yeshua Messiah. All Tanakh is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And why is that? What Here's the really, really key thing. That the man of Yahweh might be, may be perfect, thoroughly finished unto all good works. If you do not have the Tanakh, if you do not study that Old Testament, if you do not read those things and do those things, you are not a man of Yahweh that may be perfect. Period. That's, this is exactly what Paul said to Timothy here. It is those things that made you perfect. Now, that doesn't wash away your sins, but it makes you walk in an upright and perfect way once you are made clean. The letters <coughs> written to the assemblies or the churches by Paul and Peter, James, Jude, John, and the letters written to individuals such as Timothy, Philemon, uh, etc. by Paul, and the Acts, which is nothing more than a record of things that took place. They, they, uh, they are the historical account of the giving of the Holy Spirit and those things. And they were written by Luke. We're, we're just that, and that's what we got. You gotta. I'm trying to instill it so you can understand. They were letters. They were not scripture. They were letters. They are documents that tell us what happened. And the, but those letters did have teachings about the Messiah and how the assembly should conduct themselves. These letters were full of warnings of the lawlessness and deception that would be coming in these last days. They are very, very valuable to us because they give us very much insight into how to conduct ourselves and how the church should conduct themselves, telling people to stop sinning. <clears throat> they tell the, the people to do the same thing that the prophets were saying. Repent. Stop the sin. Stop transgressing the law of Yahweh. These letters, especially written by Paul, give us the understanding that Yeshua, the Messiah, fulfilled the law of Moses, the book of the law, which was placed outside of the ark. However, if one simply reads only the letters of the New Testament, <clears throat> they can never get the understanding of how Yeshua's life, death, resurrection fulfilled the requirements of the Tanakh and the temple service. You can't get it. It's not there. <clears throat> the four Gospels in the historical record of Acts and the letters were never, and get this, they were never, ever, ever to replace, nor were they to be a replacement for the scriptures. They were never a replacement for the scriptures. And, and so if you grab them and that's your scripture, then you have missed the mark. Simply, you are missing, going to miss the mark. 
in the whole of the New Testament, we have the 21 verses that reference the scriptures, then the uh, 31 verses referencing the scripture, and that is 52 verses that reference back to the Tanakh, and that's what I showed you here. You have, outside of Daniel, take Daniel away, you end up with, with 52 verses in the New Testament that reference back to the scriptures, to the Tanakh. And in the Tanakh, you have the law, the history, the prophets. The New Testament writings speak to all three of these. They address every one of them. The law, the history, the prophets. However, these New Testament writings, again, do not understand. They do not abrogate nor do they change the Torah as the Torah, as the Tanakh and the Torah can not be changed. You cannot change them. They are written and they stay the same. The way of salvation and the way of salvation has not and cannot be changed. That's really what it's all about. The New Testament writings do not abrogate, nor do they change the Tanakh. I'm sorry, do they change the Torah as the Tanakh cannot be changed. And the way of salvation has not and cannot be changed. The way of salvation has not changed since the fall of Adam in the garden. It has <clears throat> been the same from then until today, and that redemption was in the Son of Yahweh, the Lamb of Yah, Yeshua the Messiah. From the beginning to the end, the redemption was in the Son. The salvation is in the keeping of the commandments, doing what is righteous. Now there are two writings that are never to be changed and there is a very severe curse upon anyone that changes any of these two writings. Now get this, if you're going to change either one of these, you're cursed. You are accursed if you change them. That's a scary thing folks. Think about this. We're talking about two writings that cannot be changed. And these are the Torah, Moses, and the Rev book of Revelation. And be very fearful if you attempt to change or abrogate either one of these. Deuteronomy 4.1 Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. Moses taught, saying this, For to do them that you may live, that you may live and go in and possess the land which Yahweh your Elohim, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers gives you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you. So the Torah <coughs> can't be changed. Simply cannot be changed. And that's why Yeshua said, Hey, I came not to change it. Not one jot or one tittle will pass until all are fulfilled, right? Even Yeshua didn't change it. <clears throat> Revelation 22:18. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. 
if any man shall add unto these things, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues which are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Folks, that ought to, that ought to send chills down your spine. It ought to strike fear in your heart. Now, many, many of the Christians... And many that read these, I, I can't just say, yeah, many of the Christians, I'll put it that way. They take this and they apply this verse in Revelation to the whole Bible. Now, oh, you changed something in Ephesians. You made it say something a little different than, than what I wanted it to say. Oh, you're, no, sorry. Revelation is scripture revelation is scripture because scripture is what it is breathed by Yahweh it is written by Yahweh is that not what it says it, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh in other words he said it do it. Now you can say the letters have some inspiration, and they do. I'm not. I'm not denying that. But the letters uh, to go to the letter. Let's take Romans to go to Romans and say that is scripture. It's a very, very, very scary thing. Let me let me show you why. I'm getting a little off track here of my uh, of my script, but but that's okay. But let's go to Romans and let me show you why. If you're going to say Romans is scripture, because remember, scripture you have to follow it. You need to do what the scripture says, right? Because Yahweh said to do it. Well, let me let me take you here and let me just show you something. I'm not trying to knock your faith. I'm not trying to to scare you and make oh my faith ain't no good anymore. and that's not what I'm doing here I'm trying to show you how you need to have respect of the the real scriptures of Yahweh because in Romans and, and we have it in other ones but this this is a particular one so Romans if you're saying Romans is scripture we have to do what Romans says right so then uh, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant in the church, which is that you receive her in the master as become saints, and that you assist her in whatever business she has need of you, for she has been a sucker, uh, a helper of many, and of myself also. Okay, uh, if this is scripture, we're, we are in trouble. Understand what I'm saying? We can't do that. Greet uh, Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in the Messiah. We can't do that. What? Well, you see what I'm saying? So you need to get good understanding. If you want to. And the reason this is coming. Out. I think the reason this this is put on my heart so bad is because of the deceivers and deceiving deceivers and wicked men that are coming and twisting and make and and just turning everything into a lie. Good is evil and evil is good. <clears throat> now, why is Revelation scripture right here? This is the revelation of Yeshua the Messiah, which Yahweh gave to him to show to his servants things which, much, which must shortly come to pass. 
and he sent and signified it by the angel unto his servant John. Revelation is a direct word from the Creator, from our Elohim, from Yahweh, specifically word to give to us. <clears throat> That's what it is. And that is exactly the same as in Isaiah. The word of, the, of Yahweh came to me to give to you. That's what makes Isaiah scripture. That's what makes Exodus scripture. The word Yahweh spoke to Moses and he wrote the book of the law. That's what makes it scripture. And <clears throat> I'm going to come back. I want, to, I want to mention this real quickly. If those things... If these things cannot be added to or taken away from, and these are the scriptures, the words that were given to a man to give to other men, and they can't be changed, and they can't, where on earth do you think you stand if you want to change the words that Yahweh himself spoke and wrote? You think those can change? If these things that men wrote and gave to us come with a curse to change, what do you think is going to happen to you if you change what Yahweh actually spoke in this world? He spoke the Ten Commandments. He spoke, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You think if you change that to this is my beloved God, Son, my God, who I'm well pleased, do you think that's going to uh, go over well? I don't think so. I, I, I would be really, really, really frightened to change something that Yahweh said, our Creator said. Uh, sorry, I got... I'm, I'm fighting my... Being too ag aggressive in my my voice and and come, but I just I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. Anyhow, this is why Paul says this is why Paul says that says one that is circumcised for the law's sake is a debtor to do the whole law. Speaking of the book of the law, the law of Moses. Because nothing can be added nor diminished or taken away from it. In Galatians, when he was was portraying um, that the Messiah was was fulfilling these things, uh, he he was because because the uh, the 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 those of Judah that that accepted the Messiah still were trying to carry on the law of Moses. Peter was, it took him a while to overcome that and some of the others. Um, they didn't really, they were so embedded in Moses that, you know, that'd be a hard thing to have that as your, your religion your whole life and all of a sudden you have to give it up. That's, that's pretty tough. Because, that, because their righteousness was in those things, in not eating the unclean thing and, and what they drank and, and certain things that they did in their washings and, and not touching the Gentiles and not touching the dead thing. And, and all of the stuff that was in the book, that was their righteousness, which Yeshua, of course, was taking out of the way. Yeshua was now going to clean them up there. They were getting their righteousness from Yeshua. It wasn't from the sacrificial system any longer. It wasn't from the, um, on, you know, they didn't have to stay clean by what they touched and, and what they did. Uh, their cleanliness was in the heart, which is where it was supposed to be anyway. And that is a whole nother teaching on what the clean and unclean laws were all about under Mo Moses. And maybe, maybe I'll do a, a teaching on that one of these days. So it was very, it's very important because that 
that's why, and again, I'm coming back, that's why Paul says it is, uh, that if someone is circumcised, and not, I'm not saying if your parents circumcised you when you were a baby, which is a normal thing in the United States and a lot of countries, but not all over the world, okay? But that doesn't mean, oh, no, i got to keep the whole law. No, that if you purposely and specifically went out and did it, which is what they were trying to do. They are trying to say, well, the Gentiles need to be circumcised to be saved. No. No, and that's what Paul was saying. If, if you're circumcised because you're trying to keep the law, then you are a debtor to do the whole thing. That means all of the sacrifices, all of the feast days, all the holy days, all the clean, all the unclean. And, of course, that was a burden they couldn't even bear. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's a very important point to remember. A very important point to remember is that we have two separate laws given in Exodus in the Torah. One was spoken by Yahweh the Elohim and written by his finger two times on tables of stone and the other was written by Moses as dictated by Yahweh as Yahweh spoke to Moses just like a man speaks face to face it was a verbal conversation now Moses didn't see his face get this understand this he didn't see it he spoke with him face to face as a man speaks with a friend. It's an analogy here telling them how they were speaking. It was a verbal conversation. It was a give and take. They were talking with one another. Moses could ask. Moses could speak. Moses could talk. It wasn't just Yahweh do this right, 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 you know. The Ten Commandments were put inside the ark. In, he, in Exodus 21, Elohim spoke all these words saying. He spoke them, folks. And in the Hebrew, that's exactly what it says. He spoke them. He came out of his mouth, his words. I am Yahweh your Elohim. That is what he said which has brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. In Deuteronomy 10.4 And he wrote on the table, according to the first writing, because Moses broke the first ones, remember, the Ten Commandments, which Yahweh spoke unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly, and Yahweh gave them unto me. And I turned to myself and came down from the mount and put the tables in the ark which I made. I put them inside the ark which I made, and there they be as Yahweh commanded me. And in 1 Kings 8 9, it states, And there was nothing in the ark except the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb. So we have that testimony in 1 Kings. They were still there. When Yahweh made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out of the land of Egypt. Those are the Ten Commandments. And you know what? <clears throat> it doesn't even say, do not change these. Because if you can't change the writing of Moses, and you can't change Revelation, what makes you think you could even possibly enter into your mind that you could change these um, commandments that Yahweh spoke. Really bizarre stuff that men and men can do that. I, I don't get it. I guess it's deception. That's what it is. Now the law of Moses, the book of the law, <clears throat> in Exodus 33:11, and Yahweh spoke unto Moses face to face. 
as a man speaks with his friend. Get it? As a man speaks with his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. In 31, 24, And it came to pass <coughs> when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book. Get it? The book of the law. Until they were finished that Moses commanded the Levites which bear the ark of the covenant of Yahweh saying take this book of the law and put it in the side or on the outside of the ark of of the covenant of Yahweh your Elohim that it may be there for a witness against you or a witness towards you of what you are agreeing to. So it is on the side of the ark to put it in between the staves <clears throat> that were put through the ark. Yeshua said <clears throat> Not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law. It could not and cannot be changed. That is the whole point of this. It can not. It is there. Matthew 5.17 <clears throat> Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And we are <clears throat> still waiting for the fulfillment of all things. They haven't been fulfilled yet. We're waiting for a second return. That's all in the prophets. That's actually in Moses. He's going to set up a kingdom. It has not been fulfilled yet. So, if Yeshua did not change anything in there, and Yeshua testifies that not one jot or one tittle shall pass, who are we to think we can change this law? Who are we? Who, where is your arrogance? Where is your pride within you? Oh, you think you're humble, but you got to be one heck of a proud person to think that you and have the arrogance to think that you can actually change this law. Or even to think that Paul changed it, or the apostles changed it, or, or <clears throat> anybody changed it. When you have not one single word in your New Testament letters that says any of it, it that the laws can be changed or done away. The conclusion is that these scriptures referred to in the New Testament are the Tanakh. End of story. They are not the New Testament. They are the Tanakh. They have not and cannot change, and it is these that will make one wise unto salvation. Get it? It is the Tanakh. It is the Torah that is going to make you wise unto salvation. And if we do not defer to these scriptures, then we will miss the mark. As the New Testament letters only reference the scriptures in part and not in the whole. The error Christians are making today is only looking at the New Testament. And even worse, they are looking at at the New Testament through the eyes of evil deceiving men that sought to change the law of Yahweh 
to prove they had power and authority here on earth. That goes for every single Sunday worshiping Protestant on this earth. You may have deceived yourselves into, oh, we're worshiping the resurrection or whatever else, but you are a daughter of Babylon. You are a daughter of the Catholic Church that <clears throat> changed this law, and you are their daughter. You are under the rule of elders and leaders and doctrines, but you're all following the same thing. <clears throat> and I say, if only men would fear Yahweh more than their elders and doctrines. Oh, if only men would. And I say, fear Yahweh and keep and guard his commandments and save your souls. They will make you wise unto salvation. And I want, I will close with this. The book of the law of Moses was a law of separation. It was a law by which they could not live. And in that book you have the Levitical where you had the feasts, you had the sacrifices, you had the offerings, and you had the Passover, the first fruit, the um, Pentecost, the atonement, uh, all those feasts, which were the schoolmaster to lead us to Yeshua. And you also had the 600 some laws of separation, the clean, uh, the touch knots, the taste knots, all these things that were laid out there. And they separated these people from other people. That is what they were given for them. That's another whole lesson that I probably need to put here on YouTube. And maybe I have in some places, but I need to just address that, I suppose. <clears throat> but that law of separation, what did it do? It separated them from Yahweh, from the Creator. If they were unclean, they could not go to the temple and pray. They, they couldn't defile the temple. And so those things were a law of separation that separated them as a people from all the goyim, from all the Gentiles from all the rest of the nations they were separated and and of course the uh, sacrificial systems they were separated from Yah only the high priest could go in and when Yeshua died that uh, veil was rent the book of the law didn't change but it fell away it waxed old. It was no longer uh, the binding administration by which we found salvation. We found it in Yeshua. And the book of the law <clears throat> administered the punishments for breaking the Ten Commandments. Yeshua cleansed us and, and defeated sin in the flesh which enabled us to better obey the Ten Commandments. But Yeshua's judgment for breaking those Ten Commandments, the judgment that Yahweh gave to him, it's actually Yahweh's judgment, is still the same. It's just deferred. It's put off till um, a different time. It's <clears throat> but at the end of the day the judgment for those that die under Moses, for those that die under uh, the reign of Yeshua, when you break the Ten Commandments the judgment is the 
same you will be put into the lake of fire. And that's why I stress so hard. You Sunday worshipers are transgressing the law of God. And since Yahweh, it's the law of Yahweh, and since the law and since Yahweh is a just and righteous judge, his justice and his righteousness, no matter how much you pray and preach and scream and holler, what have you, depart from me, I know you not, you workers of iniquity, because you're breaking his law and you will be put into the lake of fire. That is the reality. That is the real truth of the scriptures. So again, I pray that Yahweh's word would penetrate your soul. If anybody even listened to this, to this point. And uh, may his grace and mercy shine upon you. And may he open your eyes and hearts. And for those of you that are following, let this be an encouragement to you that do not waver. Hang in there. It is almost over. We are almost done. Yahweh bless you all.